What's up everybody? Welcome back to another video. In this episode, we're going to be going over how to add some style to our HTML documents. Specifically, we're going to be talking about inline styles, embedded styles, and external styles. This is going to be a very general introduction to adding some CSS styles to your web page. And in another series, we'll go over CSS step by step. All right, so if you haven't already subscribed to this channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification icon so that way, whenever I create a new video, you'll be notified. Also, you can go to my website, pixelmweb.com, and you can go to the various sections that are designated for learning to code. I'm in the process of adding more code snippets and tutorials to the website, so definitely bookmark it. And if you want to navigate to specific areas, let's say you go to the HTML section, you can go to one of the actual articles. And if you need to copy code snippets, that's very easy to do. You can copy it to your clipboard and use it within your text editor. Okay, so we're going to be adding some style to our HTML documents. This is going to be very general. This is not going to be a full CSS tutorial, but I want to show you the process of how to get this done. All right, so now let's navigate to our text editor. Okay, so we're going to be continuing to use Visual Studio Code, but you can use the Atom text editor or you can use Sublime Text or Brackets or any other text editor or IDE you're familiar with. So the first type of styles I'm going to show you is inline styles. And so to do that, I'm going to go down here to the body tag itself. Let me make this a little bit bigger. Okay, so inside the body tag, I'm going to make a space there and I'm going to type out style equal sign double quotation marks and I'm going to say background colon and let's say I'm going to make it just black like that then I'll put in my semicolon and then I'll save it so this is an inline style I'm pretty much giving the actual HTML tag a style for itself so now let's navigate back to the browser and see how that looks so just as a reminder I have my HTML project on my desktop and I'm on the index.html page. So now what I want to do is reload this page. But before doing so, let me right click and inspect elements. And you're going to see that the body right now has these specific styles associated with them. If we go over here, you can see the, let me make this bigger. You can see that the body class is not there yet because we haven't reloaded or refreshed the browser itself. So now let's reload the browser. And now you see that the background is styled black. If you go over here, you see we have the style with the equal signs, the double quotation marks. Inside of there we have background, and then we have it set to black. That is an inline style. You can see here it says element.style. All right, so that's the first demonstration there. Let's go back to our editor. Now, we could do the same thing by going to another HTML tag, and you can give it specific styling. So I'm going to go here first, and I'm going to make this a light gray very light gray so i'm saving that now if we go over here let's go to the paragraph tag inside the opening tag before the closing greater than symbol i'm going to go there and i'm going to type out style with the assignment operator or the equal sign with the two quotation marks and in the middle of the quotation marks i'm going to say let's give it a color colon and i'm going to say red and then i'm going to put in my semicolon here and then i'm going to say font size and I'm going to make this very big so let's say 30 pixels so now this particular paragraph is going to be have a color of red while this one is not because we're not applying the style to here so make sure you save it let's go back to our browser okay so now before we reload remember this paragraph right here is what we're targeting this one is not going to be affected so let's reload the browser so now you see that our background has changed to that light gray color you see it right here but you also see that our paragraph has the inline style color red font size 30 and you see it referenced over here color red font size 30 pixels on the element style and the paragraph below it is not impacted now the thing is with inline styles this is really something you're not going to want to do often because it's going to become tedious in order to add styles to every single html tag with the inline functionality it's better to have it grouped together especially when you have a lot of general styles that you want to apply so now let's demonstrate that let's go back to our editor okay so now let's say we wanted to have all paragraphs to be a a particular color and font size so I'm just going to duplicate this paragraph right here I'm going to copy it to my clipboard 
go to a new line, paste it. And now let's say I don't want to use the inline style format in terms of putting it this way inside the actual HTML tag. Because if I have a lot of paragraphs on the page, why duplicate your effort? Time is money. All right, so what can we do? Well, we can go up to the actual head section. I'm going to uncomment this right here. And now what we have is our opening and closing style tag inside of the head section of our HTML document. And what I'm doing is I'm targeting all my paragraphs and I want to give it the color blue. And then I can say font size. And for this, let's say 20 pixels. So remember you have your actual selector right there, your type selector. We have our opening and closing curly braces. Inside we have the color property with the value of blue and then font size, the value of 20 pixels. And this is our opening style tag and our closing style tag inside of the head tag section of our HTML document. All right, so save that and then go back to the browser. Now, before we reload, what do you think is gonna happen? Remember, we have our inline style here that we did not change. This paragraph has an inline style of color of red, font size 30 pixels. But now we also use our embedded style inside of the head section. So what do you think happens next? Let's reload the browser and find out. All right, so we see now that this paragraph and this paragraph both have the color blue and the font size 20. We didn't have to do the inline style here, and it's impacting all of the paragraphs on the page, except for this one. Now, why is that? Well, because inline styles take priority over embedded styles. So for instance, if you wanted to have general styles applied to the page itself, you could use the embedded styles in the head section, have your general style formatting, and then if you really want to target something specifically, you can use the inline style in this manner. Okay, so now does this apply everywhere? I'm gonna go back here. This is the index of this project. I'm gonna go to this page right here. I'll right click and open a new tab. And now we can see this one does not have the styles applied to it. Why is that? Well, because that's another HTML document. So let's go back to our editor and see what we can do about that. All right, so like I mentioned, this is a separate HTML document itself. So any styles that we applied either inline over here or embedded at the top in the head section is not going to be utilized by any other HTML files or documents you have on your website. That's why this is actually not the best way to go about things in terms of inline styles or embedded styles. Those should be for a last resort. Another way is to go over here. If you notice towards the top, we have a link rel style sheet href pointing to our style.css file right here. This is an external style sheet and you link to it in this manner. Just remember your folder structure and your file pass. If you need a refresher on how that works, I have another video on that. File pass in terms of absolutes and relative URLs is something you definitely need to learn. And I'll leave a link to that in the cards in the upper right hand corner and in the description area below. So definitely check that out. So we have our style sheet inside of our CSS folder right here. And now if I go here, what I could do is I can say, I wanna target the paragraph put in my opening and closing curly brace, new line. And now let's say I wanna have color blue and then font size 20 pixels. And now let's save that. If you notice in our formatting.html file, I'm linking to that file itself. So now let's go back to our browser and see if that worked. All right, so now let's reload and let's see if that applied. And it took effect. The font size changed and the color changed itself. You see that right here. And now you see that it's in the style.css file. And if you hover over that, you see the path of where that file is. If we go back to the other page, and if you go to this section here, you see this shows the location of where that style is coming from. This is from the embedded style in the head section. But now let's go back to our editor and try something different. Let's go back to our index.html file. And now let's say I'm going to make this 24 pixels and I'm going to make it the color purple. Let's save that and let's see what happens. Let's go back to the browser. All right, so before we reload, remember, we have styles being applied inline. We also have the embedded style up above over here. We haven't reloaded yet, so that hasn't changed. And you see it's crossed out over here. If you go over here to computed, you can see where the actual styles are coming from, and that's being applied, okay? So now let's reload this page, and let's see what happens. 
All right, so now we see that our paragraph has the style color purple and the font size 24 pixels. And over here, this is crossed out, meaning this is not being applied. We see this is from the external style sheet. We see this is from the embedded styles up above. If we go to the head section here, we see that there. And we see that this paragraph here has inline styles. So this shows you the precedence of CSS and styles with HTML. We have our external style style sheet which has the least priority. We have our embedded styles in the head section that has a higher priority than the external style sheet. And then we have our inline styles that have a higher priority. Now there's a lot that goes into the priorities of CSS and in the upcoming playlist series on CSS I'll go more in depth on that. But this is a general overview of how you can apply styles both either as inline, embedded, or external. Let's go back to our editor. Now every HC HTML tag can be targeted with CSS. So you could target the body, you can target the h1 all the way to h6, you can target the anchor elements, you could target divs, spans, paragraphs, block quotes, all of them. All you have to do is identify them, either in your inline styles or your embedded styles or your external styles. Now another thing you could do is you can add classes. So if we go over here, let's say I'm going to give this one a class. I'm going to call this lead. All right, so what is this? Well, with CSS, you can either target the actual selector itself, like a paragraph or a div or an anchor element, or you can create classes, which you could use multiple times on a web page, or you can create IDs, which you could only use once on a particular web page. So I'm going to go over here. Let's say I'm going to give this an ID. And I'm just going to give it a generic type of ID. So now we have our ID over here of diff. And I'm just calling it that just to make it different from everything else or the other divs. Matter of fact, I'll copy this here and I'll paste it down here. And this one I'll call diff2. And this one I'll call lead2. Just so I can show you a comparison. So remember, we're using the ID over here with the equal sign, double quotation mark, and then the name of our ID. And here we're creating the class, equal sign, double quotation mark, lead2. And this one is diff lead. All right, so now save that. And let's go to our style sheet over here. And we want to target those. So for the ID, we say diff. I'm going to say background will be this dark gray color and then I'll say color will be white and for this just in case I'm going to put in the important rule over here and then I'll go down here and I'll say diff 2 background is going to be red and color is going to be black. Let's save that and then to target the classes, put in our period, the name of the class, opening and closing curly brace, and then I'll say font size 40 pixels. I'm going to copy this here, put it down here, and this is just for demonstration to show you the difference. And this will be 60 pixels. Now let's save this. All right, so what's happening here is we're targeting the ID diff, giving the background of that diff to be like a dark gray. And then we're making the color going to be white. And we're just making it important so that way it overrides any other styles that might be applied. This is a trick just to get around priorities or to give this a higher priority. All right, now let's save that. Let's go back here real quick just to double check something. You see this diff here, we gave it a background of a light gray or a medium gray. Same thing here, but we're trying to override that over here. Matter of fact, I got to copy that. Save that. All right, so we're overriding that here. Now let's go back to our browser and see if that worked. Okay, let's go back to that formatting page right here. All right, so before we reload, we see here that we have the background is set to this light or medium gray right here. Now let's see if we're able to override that. Let's reload this page. And we did. All right, so now what's happening here? We are targeting this div with the ID of diff. And you see the actual styles applied over here in this section. We're making 
making the color white and the background is dark grayish. But now we see that the color has not been applied here. Why is that? This is because of specificity. So if we go over here, we see that this paragraph has the color blue. So since the div was given the color of white, you would typically think that everything inside the div would have a color of white other than the background because colors would target the fonts and stuff. But that's not the case because we also have a rule, a CSS rule for the paragraph. If we disable this here, you see now that is white. We also see the font size of the class lead is 40 pixels. And this one, even though we were targeting a paragraph, was overridden. Let me just reload this again. So now let's go over here. One good thing about developer tools in the browser is you can play around with some CSS here. And if you like the results, you can take that and put it into your style sheet. So now I'm going to say color white. And now you see that the lead class is overriding the paragraph itself. Even though this has the color blue, this is not being utilized because the lead is taking priority. You can also see the computed right here and you can see what's being computed on this actual element. If we go over here to the next one, you see that we have over here lead to the class, which is inside the opening paragraph tag, has another font size of 60 pixels, making it very large. But even though our diff here has again the color black being applied even with important the fact that this is being more specific in terms of the paragraph being targeted this is taking priority but we could do the same thing here we can say color black and now you see that changed and now this blue is being crossed out and not being utilized because again the class is taking priority all right so let's go back to the editor and now just to recap we can have inline styles in this manner using the style attribute right here equal signs your double quotation mark and then we could give it a color you can target the font size you can target the font family a lot of different css rules and then we have the value here for red and then font size over here 30 pixels don't forget to have everything inside the opening HTML tag itself when you're doing this. This is an inline style. And just make sure your quotation marks match and that you have your semicolon when needed. You could also have embedded styles in the head section. And that's done in this manner with the opening and closing style tag. And then you could target your selectors. You could target your classes. You could target your IDs and use the properties and values in that manner. Or you can link to an external style sheet and have your styles applied over here. This is better because this will take effect on every single web page that links to this file. And you can make the change once here and it'll be applied everywhere instead of having to go to every single HTML document and either embedding the style in the head section or trying to find the tags and doing inline styles. Let's go back to the browser real quick. Another thing you should do is definitely get familiar with your developer tools. I'll create another video that's specific to how to use the developer tools and all the different types of functionality. But you can play around with the CSS here and see what the changes are and how they're applied. And if you like those, you can then do the same thing within your actual external style sheet or embedded styles and things of that nature. Again, if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, make sure to subscribe and hit the notification icon so that way you'll be notified when I create a new video. All code snippets can be found on my website, pixelmerb.com. You can navigate to the various sections and copy the code snippets that you need. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. If you have any comments or questions, leave them down below, and I will see you in the next video. Happy coding.